Welcome to Never Seen It Film Club, the film club where we watch films that you've never seen. I'm one of your hosts, Emma Bainbridge. This is another one of your hosts. It's Robert J. Simpson from Cinepunk. And we're here this time watching erotic thriller for the ages. It's Showgirls from 1995. Where are you from? Different places. Tony, she's all pelvic thrust. I mean, she prowls. Nice dress. Thanks. I bought it at Versace. I want to see you dance, and I want to see you smile. You fuck him without fucking him. Well, it ain't right. You got too much talent for it to be right. Hi, Robert. How are you today? Hi. <laughs> I, I, do you want me to give an honest answer, or should I give the Vegas answer? I think you should do your Vegas answer and then the real answer. I'm amazing. And then how do you really feel? I'm a bit miserable, to be honest. But, you know, <laughs> it's 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 end of November. Um, life is hard. And, uh, then you I, I, and I had to watch Sugar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Emma. Yeah, sorry. Again, not me. I didn't pick Showgirls. This was all the members' fault. <laughs> like, it's the one that I didn't have any input in. So there's at least eight members of the Never Seen It Film Club who were like, we definitely want to watch it. And they never showed up. You all need beaten mistakes. Honestly. So I, I, I get, I'm guessing this wasn't your favorite film you've ever seen for the first time? It's not my favourite film I've ever seen for the first time, no. It's not the worst film I've ever seen, I mean, which is a very low caveat to put on it. Um, it, it it's not an abomination like The Room. It's not great. Not great, Bob! Well, see, I heard a rumour that you want us to show The Room again, so... I fed up with his world! Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we should make it a double bill and put Showgirls on I, there. I, I, I don't. I, I could watch. I mean, look, I, this is a film that I could probably watch again and get something out of. I mean, I, I, there's a lot of, uh, even though it reaches these sort of worst film ever lists, I am aware that there is a school of thought that says this is actually a very clever satire mm. of that industry and so if people are seeing that in it and they're they're singing its praises there must be something there just the same as i've been able to talk endlessly about the room even though i hate it um so there must there, there, there is a certain something here it's just the whole as a whole it kind of falls apart and i don't know i i i, I don't really know what I was expecting from it. I think I may have seen this at some point in the past, but it has completely slipped my memory. So brilliant was it. Um, so watching it felt like very, watching it very much afresh and it didn't do a lot for me. It did not do a lot for me. I mean, I think that's fair. Um, I think get, saying it's a satire gives it way too much credit because I think we have to bear in mind the man who wrote this also wrote Basic Instinct. So I'm telling you. I could never have shut Burns! Ah. This is your last warning about that? I don't I don't think he's that smart. Um He's very well paid. Well, um, two are mutually inexclusive there, folks. Um three point seven million he got for this. It feels like it was written over a long weekend. <laughs> it feels like do you know what it feels like? You know when you get an application form for something? And you're like, I must remember to do that. Mm. And then it gets to the night before. You've got eight hours. And you go, no, I'll go to sleep. And I'll do it fresh in the morning. It'll only take me a couple of hours. <laughs> That's what this feels like. It feels like he was given money to write a film. Like he wrote the synopsis. Then he forgot about it. Mm -hmm. And then over a long weekend mm -hmm. was like, I have to write a film. But also go drinking and sleep a lot because it just feels like a fever dream. And it does feel like a sex dream that somebody's had and gone, I'll write this down and I'll make Gina Gershman star in it. Last night, Jay had a sexy dream about some woman. Oh, 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 oh baby. Oh, oh, oh baby. Oh, baby. Um, with Elizabeth Banks. That's what it feels like. Elizabeth Berkeley? Yeah. Elizabeth Berkeley, not Elizabeth Banks. She might have been a better know me, though. 
That is mahogany. I mean, I think that's probably my problem with it. It's not even it's not even the abundance of tit, which there is. I mean, I, I I've I've been to Vegas once. I went to see no shows, so I had and and like my Vegas reference is probably Elvis's Viva Las Vegas. Viva Las Vegas. Viva Las Vegas. Viva Elvis. Viva and Margaret. Viva the excitement when these two let themselves go on a wild and woolly world through Funtown, USA. Or Mars Attacks. Girls, get out! Get out! Get out! There's a, there's a Martian right behind me. And um, so I wasn't expecting the copious amounts of nudity within the film. Okay, show me your tits. I got a top of the show, for Christ's sake, let me see your tits. Which raised all kinds of questions for me anyway, but um, it it's Elizabeth Berkeley is the problem. I get that she she apparently was the girl who was prepared to could dance, had the energy, and was also prepared to do the full frontal nudity, which a lot of actresses were not okay with. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if it's her characterization or if it's how it's written, but she spends most of the film behaving like a petulant child, <laughs> like having a tantrum every time anything happens. And I disengage every single time she throws another strop. And that I think is the failure because she seems so infantile, mm -hmm. so adolescent that I can't I can't be convinced in anything. You know, it's like I'm an it's just like someone going on America's Got Talent. What's your name? Nomi. And what do you do for a living? Nothing. I'm lazy at the moment. I'm an amazing dancer. No, you need some training. I'm an amazing dancer. Yeah. You lot live your life. You're all each other's is all to get where you want to be. And the truth of the matter is, you and you know you. And don't want to hear anything. And don't criticize me. And you're horrible. And you're horrible. And I just want to go to my mum. And I, it's really, really, really tiring. And if, it, if, you, if you scrap that, if you change that characterization, I think there might be a watchable film in there. Do you know what that watchable film becomes? Minus the nudity. Burlesque. I've not seen that. Well, oh, maybe we should add that to the list. Burlesque is more or less the exact same plot of Showgirls. It's it's like Showgirls mixed with um, Coyote Ugly. So Christina Aguilera comes to Vegas. I think it's Vegas. Might not be Vegas. Might be LA. Can't remember which one. Um, but she goes somewhere um, to become a singer. And she starts this burlesque club. And the whole thing is that... You know she's amazing and should get all the, the 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 she should get the spotlight, but she has to work for it and like there's a whole thing about it. But her character's likable because she's she's like the exact same level of acting I would say. Um, but it, and it has the advantage of having Sharon it. But her character is still quite bratty in a way, but also has the humility to be like. Oh yeah, I don't have to blame everybody for my problems. You mm. know, maybe the fact that <laughs> I'm not a singer, uh, like in every club, is because this is a burlesque club and they're not singing. Mm -hmm. So she's like, it's a whole thing. But uh, yeah, I I've never hated a main character or not warm to them as much as I have with Nomi. I think my main problem with her is that she's like, I want to be a dancer, so I'm going to go to Vegas. Because notoriously, lots of dancers in Vegas, not New York, you know, where there's like a thousand Broadway shows that need dancers, or the Rockettes, who are like the most famous dance troupe in the world. But she doesn't want to be that kind of dancer. She wants to be a showgirl. Yeah, well. I mean, I mean, the, I suppose that the. But then has a problem when she's asked to get her baps out. Are we allowed to spoil this? Yeah, I think we're like, it's from 1995. It's 20 years old almost. I, I mean, I didn't know what I was getting into. No, I, we can spoiler it. I think, I, I guess part of that comes down to her hidden identity um, and her backstory that is, is sort of hinted at when, when you sort of realise when you watch those confrontations, there's a reason that she behaves in the way she does to the guy in the car. Mm. 
Um, and she's not wrong either. Her instinct is completely solid. The guy is up to no good. Um, but I think because they hold back on it so much mm. and it's not until literally the final reel that they reveal who she is. I don't know. It just feels a little bit harder to take. You know, if if, if I knew that she was a down and out person who had had to prostitute her way to make ends meet mm. from the start and it was clear but then she's always kind of denying that that existence for herself so I suppose it's it, 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 it's there and it probably explains why she's such a bitch to everyone <laughs> but she is so bitchy different places again I think like Julia Roberts' character in Pretty Woman, mm. it's the same kind of deal. And she's in the midst of still having to work as a sex worker. But she's not a total raging lunatic. Maybe it's slightly different. I don't know. Maybe that, like, it's just there's not a likability factor with Nomi. Maybe there doesn't have to be. Maybe this is, like, where my uh, kind of bias towards her as a character becomes. Maybe we don't have to have a likability with our our protagonist maybe it's more truthful that she's you know a raging bitch to everyone she meets and she has the right to be and maybe it's my expectations to be like you know on women that are like you've been through something difficult that doesn't mean you have to be a difficult person it's that be nice and smile thing hmm. i'm like would i expect that of a male protagonist who's been through similar situations but then i don't think men would come across um wanting to be punched in the face every two seconds, which is how I felt about Nomi. I think they come out as broody and kind of a different vibe, but um, mm. I don't think Elizabeth Berkeley's acting helps the situation whatsoever, though, because it is, there's no journey to anything. She is constantly up here mm. and has weirdly a monotone of yelling like her, her voice and 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 attitude don't change, no matter if she's happy or sad. I mean, I I grew up watching her on Saved by the Bell, um, and when I think about it, there's probably not a lot of difference there either. It's it's very much at a at a, at a pitch level. I think that she's she, there are a couple of moments where she kind of softens it down a bit, where there is something else, and I almost kind of want to like her, but every time she gets to that point where you're starting to be won over back comes the child. Yeah. And maybe that is stylistic and maybe this is why they're they're kind of saying why people say it's a satire. Mm. Um it does feel it's not a flattering portrayal of anything. I mean I'm shocked that the Vegas hotels didn't sue because <laughs> they don't seem like nice places. Backstage doesn't seem like a nice place to be. No. The producers don't seem like nice people. Um so it's a really, really warped horrid, grungy kind of underbelly. I, I I really, I didn't warm to anything. No. None of it's nice. None of it's, in, like, none of it makes me go, I want to live in this world at all. Mm. Um, and again, maybe that's the point. Maybe um, it's a, it's, it's the, it's to give you that feeling of what it's actually like in Vegas. Because I think so many films portray Vegas in that kind of jokey underbelly way where it's mm. like, oh, you know, anything, like, look at The Hangover. It's like, it's still kind of Americana clean cut in a way, even though it's like this gritty under, cr like this crime boss that they get friendly with. And I'm like, yeah, I don't think that's how it works over there. I, d I don't think somehow. But even like, I'm trying to think off the top of my head about other films but like anytime I see Vegas in a film well CSI well even CSI it's I mean, like it's sparkly and like and it's very attractive even the great yeah. even the horrible bits look very attractive yeah whereas this just gives me the ultimate ick I'm like mm. I don't want to be anywhere near it, it, it there's every aspect I mean it's, it's it's down to the sex and it's down to I mean Vegas is about sex as much as it's about sex and gambling um, there's very little gambling within the film there's a lot of sex <laughs> Uh, of one form or another, uh, and, and you know it's 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 a place where prostitution is legal, and there's 
a line I think that people from Northern Ireland, where we're recording, would find very difficult to comprehend. Mm. Um, I think it, I think it blurs a lot of stuff. Um, I think everybody is a, everybody's a commodity. W- women are used as a commodity in this. Yeah, they're not given much agency of their own. Um, ultimately, even when you think someone is being strong, you realize there's a man pulling the strings anyway. And in this case, it's you know it's it's Kyle McLaughlin Zach who actually seems semi decent for most of the film, and then is just a big a prick as everyone else with his emo haircut. Yeah, his re- his big reveal. So it just. I, I, there's not words like when I first encountered Showgirls as a concept, I thought I'd be in for a campy, over the top good time the way that people talked about it, and like the whole thing with like the pearls and like the falling and like you're like, it's a it's it's a, it's a drama set like Showgirls being bitchy about who gets to be the lead in a show and I was like oh this is gonna be fine, and then it's like no there's mm. like. It's so dark and, and grim, but it's not even, like, it, I don't even know how to describe it. Just woeful, <laughs> I guess. But there's not even an attempt to kind of make you warm up to anybody. Like, even with Zach, I'm like, he is, for most of the film, kind of the only decent character, um, male character anyway. Mm. Um but there's not there's nothing about him that would make me like him in real life. No, he's quite um he's still quite cold, quite flashy, quite you know. Ha-ha. Mm-hmm. The the two people actually, the, the, I mean the two characters that surprise me and they, they seem to have an arc um are the the older woman and the club owner from the other club place who I mean, I wish I could remember the names off the top of my head. I can't. Um, she, with her fantastic dress that pops out her boobs and back <laughs> in again and does really crappy comedy routines in the club, is actually quite fun and quite gregarious and obviously a mother figure. So she comes across quite well. And then the club owner, who seems so seedy and horrible and is always banging on about blowjobs. <laughs> Actually, when he comes to see her, passes her compliment and, and and suddenly is very, very tender and nice. And I'm like, oh, you actually seem like decent people underneath it all. It's like, is this... The, it's it's almost it's almost like uh, the grotty club uses the grot to hide a niceness. And actually, they're quite a pleasant place. The stardust... Um, uses all its clean, showy business to hide its seediness. Mm. You know, that's the juxtaposition that, the juxtaposition that I'm getting from it. Weirdly. No, I think that's a fair point. I'm just... Every time I think of it, though, I'm like, who's who's actually paying money to go see these shows? Like, the Stardust is, like, like in the film, is, like, billed as, like, this glam, ultra-glamorous club and stuff. And I'm like, who's actually... I've never experienced a world where... Men in particular would go. Do you know what I would love? You know what I would love if the strip club strippers, if they just put on like a thematic show that had like operatic goals in mind. That would be great for me. I, I'm like, and yeah, I just, I, do, I, who is the audience for the Stardust? I think it's a. I mean, I think for us, it's a culture shock. I think there's there's a culture within Vegas that is is alien to me. Yeah, for sure. Um, but it it exists and. This in many ways feels more like a, a, a sort of real side of it because obviously you know you buy into the fantasy of the the glitz and the glam, and actually the reality is 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 far from pleasant. Hmm. It's abusive. It's manipulative. It's exploitative, um, and it's misogynistic, in the extreme. Uh, you know that not that that's a massive surprise, but I mean that that's most exemplified, I think, by the rape sequence, which I know there's still a lot of controversy about whether or not that was even needed within the film. Mm. Um, and it's 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 uncomfortable, but again, it's the reactions to that. It's the you know it's 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 Zach kind of going, eh, you know, it's part of the job. Suck it up. I'll pair off. Um, and then there's the the almost, almost like I spit in your grave kind of revenge. 
which I quite, I mean, that's actually where the film gets good, mm. is where Elizabeth Berkeley takes revenge. That's the film, actually, maybe I would like to see, is, is yeah. what happens when, when the showgirl tears that, everybody apart. That'd be way more interesting than watching uh, the really camp um, stage director just tell her to thrust continuously for five minutes. Mm-hmm. Thrust it! Thrust it! Thrust it! Thrust it! Come on, thrust it! Stop! Okay. That's enough. Thank you, ladies. Yeah, it seems like, it, it does feel like the interesting parts of the plot are skipped over for gratuitous body shots of women in skimpy slash no clothing. Mm. And then when it just about gets interesting, it just almost makes you forget about it. Mm-hmm. Or tells you to forget about it and just to move on. And there is a Showgirls 2, which I have no idea anything about. <laughs> Ending, man, when you're chasing that dream. I'd like to stick this in your G-string. So, uh, are you gonna be an actress or something? I'm gonna be a star. I had to claw my way all the way to the top. But yeah, a showgirl three, maybe, where it's uh, Nomi comes back in a Kill Bill style scenario where she has exacted revenge on everyone that's wronged her and then creates a dance performance based on her experience. And it flashes back, and then it's CSI Las Vegas, and then they have to forget, and that's what it is. That would be more interesting. I mean, there is that point where they they do the dance to the Prince number. It is Prince number, isn't it? Um, the, the sort of the the three of them in the kind of the the Groyer Club, and it's like nobody wants to listen to this stuff. This is this is actually kind of class choreography, mm. and they don't care about that because they're clothed as well. They're all the the girls who normally do stripping are clothed in that sequence. They're still doing an erotic dance, but, you know, there's not a nip in sight. And the, the audience just isn't buying it because that's not what they come for. That's not the illusion that they want. That's not the, the, the kind of the the focus of it. It is bizarre. I just find it, I think my, my culture shock probably takes away any anything else. But it's also still a shit film. Yeah, it's not very good. <laughs> the, the I think from Memory Serves... For me, the whole thing about showgirls, certainly within my age group, was the nudity mm. was very tantalizing for like boys oh, yeah. and the sex scenes. And mm. then you watch them and you're like, um, that's not how people have sex in pools. And if you're having sex like that in a pool, don't. You'll get a yeast infection. It'll be very unfortunate. Mm. Um, please don't do the dolphin. It's not a good idea. It's very unsanitary. People pee in pools. Gross. Um, but that certainly, it was, that I think is more of its reputation from my memory was than anything else. Mm. So maybe that's its excuse for not being a good film. It's that I can't decide, as you said, I can't decide whether it was intentionally done to be a satire of Vegas and like kind of given us an actual look into the seedy underbelly of this world. Or just an excuse to get everyone's baps out and have a mainstream erotic thriller type film be a box office failure, which it definitely was, but just for the crack. I can't decide. Baps, flaps, and crack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my provisional title for Sugar Girls 3. There we go. Um, Coming to a cinema near you. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um. Yeah, the the one the one thing I keep on picking up on and and kind of the positive commentary around it is about the uh, I hadn't realized there's such an LGBTQ plus following apparently. Apparently so. Apparently, I you know it's like why well, I I I'm assuming this is, this is part. I'm assuming it's it's high camp. Yeah. Is is part of the appeal, and the other is that there is a sort of. There is a lesbian relationship that's... I gotta go. Aren't you gonna come here and give me a big kiss? Hinted at 
mar- slightly tasted but never indulged. <laughs> nice. Yeah, mm. well, I think, yeah, I think a lot of queer women who like this film, in my experience, have found it because they've seen Bound. Okay. And they they kind of view it as like the, the like the, just because basically Gina Gershwin is fucking hot and mm. is really good at be playing a queer woman. Mm-hmm. Um, so even those little hints are enough to keep you watching showgirls. Even though, like, in my experience, queer women, we don't tend to, well, I'm not speaking for all queer women because that would be stupid. But in my experience... Hashtag like, not all queer women. Yeah, hashtag, <laughs> please, don't cancel me. Um, boobs are not enough to get us interested. It's the, it's the, it's the emotional, <laughs> romantic, like, lead up. That's mm. why Ammonite is such a fucking awesome film. If you haven't watched Ammonite, talk about it. Slow burn for a sex scene. Anyway, um, but yeah, I think there's there's definitely elements of that. I think of of this kind of we like to follow actors who play queer mm. a lot, um, and then I think the gay men that I've talked to, the queer men that I've speak spoke to who love this, they do they love it for the high camp factor and the kind of the like the fabulous costumes. It is very drag in like because Vegas is like Vegas is like the home of drag essentially. I know. Again, for us over here, it's hard to imagine, but you've got like um, there is a I think it is called Showgirls the review the drag review which has been going on for way before the film Showgirls. It's this huge kind of show featuring drag queens, and it's very much in this thread. And you can imagine if you made these these characters drag queens, it would not be hard to to make it. <laughs> The exact same film, very queer and makes sense. You wouldn't have to change any of the plot. It would be the exact same. <laughs> now go on and show them what you got, little person. <laughs> Don't worry about me, Mommy. I will. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> mommy, how could you? I guess you don't know me. Elizabeth Berkeley might get away with more of her shouting. <laughs> oh God, yeah, bless her. The only thing I can remember about um, Elizabeth Berkeley outside of Showgirls is that bit in Saved by the Bell where she's like, "I'm so excited, I'm so excited, I'm so excited, I'm so, I'm so," because she's supposed to be high on speed. I think it's supposed to be, but then it got censored, so it's caffeine tablets. Right. And so she's just continuously going. I'm like, it's great. <laughs> Um, and that is her showgirls acting because it's the exact same. And she's like, I'm like, she's a very lovely woman, I'm sure. But maybe this was not the best breakout film for her to do straight after Saved by the Bell. I don't know. I mean, that that's always the, 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 the question that everyone has to ask when you come off the back of a show like that and have become some kind of icon. I mean, she's only, what, 23 when she made this? Mm-hmm. Like, so she's still very, very young. And... If the film had been a bigger success at the time, it probably wouldn't have done her career any harm. The problem was it didn't do terribly well at the box office on its initial release. It became a quite successful on, on DVD and mm-hmm. VHS, if you remember those kids. Um, so that's where the money was made, and, and it made its, made its profit. Um, it has, I think, hung around her neck a little bit, like a noose. Yeah. Um, it has haunted her. That said, didn't stop her doing Dancing with the Stars in America. Um, so clearly she, she does like to dance indeed. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it was the right or the wrong decision for her. But I... It's certainly it, a decision. It's a decision. It, it's a bold decision. I mean, it's... You know, I mean, Dustin, Dustin Diamond went off and did sex films too. Mm. But in a rather more seedy way from what I gather. Um, I, I, I don't know. It, it, it was a bold choice and I think because she'd come off a kid's show, mm. that's where a lot of the controversy, I guess, lay. And also why I think probably what stopped people from engaging in it in some respects. It just felt a bit wrong. It's like if someone off Blue Peter comes on and starts doing pornos, you're a bit conflicted because, they, they, yeah, they'll show you one they made earlier, but, you know, it's meant to be done with sticky back plastic, not, Oh, right. I'm cutting that in. No, no. <laughs> well, I, you know, if nothing else, she has created a trope of child actress does erotic thriller. Mm. That's all. Like, that's in every kind of t- 
TV show about TV shows now, it's it's always a big uh, plot, and, and she's been ripped off continuously. Um, and a lot of, of <laughs> I'm just trying to think of anything that's not the L word, but I can't think of anything because it's just terrible. But um, okay, I don't know. It's one of those. It is. It's it's a bad film. It's a terrible film. I wouldn't seek it out, but. If you like it, it's fine. Like it's. If like, you like it, it's fine. Like, it's, if you it's, like it, it's fine. Like I'm not gonna. I don't know if I would judge people who like it as a film negatively, other than be like, oh. I've seen a lot. I mean, I've seen a lot of crap in my time, um, and it's just up there with the minds of other crap. It's just that it's a very. It's jarring. N- it's, it's very nude-filled jar of crap. Yeah, it's it it for me. It's it's like. Why is everyone naked, and why am I so uncomfortable with the nakedness? Because it's like, it's so bad. Like it's just it like in terms of just being a jarring experience. It's like it get, it's almost like watching The Shining for the first time, and the like you know the way The Shining has the Kubrick has the soundtrack mm-hmm. of like the invisible sound. Mm-hmm. There's something about Showgirls that when you watch it, it just immediately makes you want to just go, oh no. I think for me anyway. Probably the, the part of the problem I think is because it wasn't exactly a, for mainstream release. This was an NC seventeen, mm. and that that's like a kiss of death most of the time anyway. Which may also have part of the reason why it didn't do so at the box office because it was too raunchy. Um, so because it's aimed at a more adult market, you but you kind of go in there and you have expectations about what you can and can't see within a film, even at an adult level. Mm-hmm. And I think this just has a little bit more in your face. There, there's, there's a Literally. point. There's a point where, um, you know, there's the, the other guy from the club that she kind of takes a semi shine to, and he's criticizing her because, you know, she's she's basically been having sex with Zach in the private dance room, mm. and she's like, no, it's not what it is, it's, it's not at all. But I mean, you know, she's bumping and grinding in the nip all over him until he comes. So, like, where do you draw the line? I mean, it's a very physical, very... But it's also a room full of other people who are doing exactly the same thing. And I think for the average cinema goer, that changes this from being um, a regular film to being a pornographic film. And I think that's the thing. This is really a porno in disguise. Mm. And that's not immediately clear. And I think that's why we feel uncomfortable. Because at least if you go, if you know you're going to watch a porno, yeah, you're prepared. This is not. I yeah. I wasn't. I actually wasn't prepared for the <laughs> level of, uh, of gratuity within this. Mm. I mean, it's not. No, it's uh, not. It's not like blue is the warmest color, where there's like fake vaginas and and stuff like that. Yeah. But it it like especially for 1995. It is gratu- like it is like I don't like gratuitous is like a big word to use, but like. It is gratuitous in every shape and form where you're like, okay, so normally the camera would cut away at a point mm-hmm. and it doesn't, it's, it holds and it lingers and it almost forces you to watch it. Oh, it, it, it completely does. I mean, like you watch the dance numbers on the stage mm. and the camera's all, there's points where the camera's right down low and all you're getting is, is crotch in camera. And that feels like I shouldn't be watching this. Mm. I I. I'm kind of going. Is, is this a lie? Am, am I? Is it, what's the relationship we have here with with what's the deal with the film? Am I? So it it makes you feel uneasy. But then maybe that is the point. Is mm-hmm. whether it was intentional or not. Maybe that is the point. Is that we should feel slightly uneasy about participating in those kinds of shows and participating in that kind of culture, and we should be asking ourselves questions about where we draw the line and what becomes something already on a stage to something that's that's kind of slapping an ass as mm. you walk through a bar like there it's definitely making you ask questions about your your own boundaries i think but it's predominantly with women as the object yeah i think it definitely is a film that you could hold up as an example of the uh voyeuristic male gaze in film and just being like it's the prime example of like this is how in like in I think to an extreme level women are used in as objects in not just film but in general in the media and in advertising and and all that kind of stuff um and it does it raises the the question in my head certainly of like what should we expect from actors 
Mm. Because, uh, again, I'm like, it's so easy, I think, especially now where for positive or for negative, you know, everyone has their own opinion and it's grand. Whether nudity is necessary in films, full stop, like, should we expect that from actors just like, and, and like this kind of, it? yes, their character might be in this world, but the actor is not of this world and they're still having to do this act uh, and have it recorded and it's then forever. Um, and then there's no ability to withdraw consent of mm. their body being used in that way. It's just an interesting one for me where I'm like, huh, do I feel comfortable seeing this much of these people? Mm. Not really. Uh, I feel like I should phone, like, tweet them all and be like, is it okay that we watch Showgirls? I'm very sorry. And you know what? Most, like, a lot of them probably very proud of their work. And, you know, it's an extreme film, but, like, the dance numbers are pretty impressive. But, um, yeah, I do, I do, I think the underlying thing that Showgirls makes me feel is grimy. Mm. I feel a bit greasy and a bit grimy after watching it. Yeah, too too grimy to stick on a Disney film to kind of like clean cleanse can't, yourself. Can't. It's just it's it's like a I need a shower and a couple of days rest. Before just watch no, else. no television. Just think about what you did <laughs> watching that dirty film. I, I well, I think that's it, isn't it? It's a dirty film. It is, yeah. It's a, it, I mean, if I, I, I mentioned to someone else the other day that I was watching this, and that's what we were talking about this week, and like I can see the look as I tried to explain what it was about. <laughs> and I'm like, as I say this, and it comes out of my mouth, I already feel like I need a flashing Mac on. <laughs> um, so I think it's a dirty film. I, I, I think that's, how, or at least that's how we perceive it. Yeah. Or De- how it leaves this feeling. Yeah, it's a blue. It's a blue movie. I'm glad I didn't come in to watch it. It's Honestly. All I, can say. I don't think I could have stopped. I don't think it's a film I want to go and watch with, with an room, audience. With a room full of people. Just like all of us, like elbow to elbow, knee to knee. It's just, it's not great. It's not a lovely feeling. Um, being in a room full of people watching it, but... <laughs> If, mind you, if you've had a really good experience I watching this in a room full of people, please let us know. Why? I, I, what's it like watching it as a community? <laughs> oh dear! <laughs> oh no! Just like I'm just now imagining, just like a bunch of like elderly people just hanging out, being like, "Oh, what are we watching today? Oh, we're watching show that showgirls. Oh, it's a feminist <laughs> mistake." It's just, it's just, yeah, it just, uh, yeah. It's a feminist mistake. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> and that is the tagline for <laughs> Showgirls 3. The feminist mistake. All right. Okay, so I, out of all of the films we've watched, it's not the worst. It's definitely not the best, but it might be the dirtiest. I think that's a fair assessment yeah. of what we can say about Showgirls. You need a shower after watching it um, for so many reasons. Well, don't watch it with your mum. Don't. I would argue, don't watch it with anybody. Especially, don't watch it if you have a pet in the room, because then you'll just make awkward eye contact, and they will judge you. Um, this is what happened to you. Just the dog in the corner being like, what the heck? Uh, so, um, but yes, it's it's one of the, it's one. Of, it's definitely deserves, unlike Hairspray, which we argued last time that should not be on this list, this definitely deserves to be on this list. It is, without a doubt, one of the worst films that I've ever seen. It's definitely a Z-list film. And I'm glad that I will never have to watch it again unless I'm forced to in a scenario that I can't think of right now. But that's what it would take, is someone else making me watch this film. It's terrible. Um, but ha- I'm glad I now have seen the cultural phenomena that is Showgirls. So now we have that under our belts, at least. Phew. Yeah. I know we were both worried about that. Um, but yeah, so I think definitely deserves to be on this list and it definitely deserves to be in a box, inside of another box, somewhere else. So, yeah, don't watch it. Yeah, just don't worry about don't it. Don't watch it. Let's re- we watch the films that you don't have to see. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, just watch The Room again, I guess. Just take this and put it in the box with The Room. <laughs> And take your matches and light fire Set both on of them. Fire. There you go. The two DVDs that will not go away. I mean, don't buy the DVD. Certainly don't get it on like Amazon or something because then it's tied to you for life. 
just imagine the the pop up ads you get if you buy showgirls. What is it going to recommend to you? Anyway, um, thank you for joining us today. If you would like to follow Accidental Theatre, you can because we're on social media like every other business in the world. Um, you can just search us for on Instagram, Facebook, all that jazz at Accidental Theatre. Um, and you can follow Robert and Cinepunked at. You'll get Cinepunked at Cinepunked on most things. That's uh, and somewhere I think it's Instagram or Cinepunked Film. Uh, you'll find me pretending to be Cinepunked and also at Avalard at various places as well. Nice. Well, that's it. So we're going to leave now and go have separate cool showers. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us this week. Goodbye, everybody. Bye.